Hello and welcome to the Meeting Project Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Daniel A. Franz. And as always, thank you for this opportunity to bring a little bit of mental health and meaning to your day. <clears throat> this is going to be a, a an information-dense podcast, but I suspect it might be rather brief because I am high as a kite right now. Uh, my wife picked up some cinnamon rolls yesterday at a local farmer's market. And I had one with my coffee before sitting down to record this podcast. And I tell you what, I can feel my teeth humming right now. I am on such a delicious sugar rush. Uh, we all know that means the crash is coming. So watch out for those uh, Amish farmers market cinnamon rolls. Whew, boy, are they good. But uh, man, let's see if we can get a podcast in before the sugar rush hits or the sugar crash hits. Um information dense podcast today i want to share a lot with you it is that time of the year we have um you know put away the turkey finished up all the leftovers from thanksgiving and it's just a few short weeks until christmas so in my office that means a lot of things and i was thinking about that and you know i've, I've put out podcasts at this time of year uh, about holiday gift giving and seasonal affect disorder. We're just going to put it all together in one podcast. Um, because I think for the next few months, um, a lot of these ideas apply, right? The idea that, and you've heard this from me before. Well, first of all, if by the time this podcast is released, um, we will have two and a half weeks. Let me see. One, two, yeah, two and a half weeks until Christmas Day. Um, now, I know historically in past years, it feels like there's usually seven or eight weeks between Thanksgiving and Christmas. But for some reason this year, we literally have five minutes after Thanksgiving until Christmas, five minutes to do all of that holiday shopping and preparation and food gathering and all those things we do to make this the most joyous time of year. And that can be pretty stressful. And so I think my job is to help relieve a little bit of your stress and give you some ideas on how to cope with that for the next five minutes or two and a half weeks, but even after Christmas too, because we know uh, for a large part of uh, this demographic, depending on where you live, the time after Christmas, we talk about seasonal affect disorder and its impact on us. Um, and quite honestly, I know in my office... Um, <laughs> That conversation started pretty much two weeks after our time change when it started to get dark at 5.30 at night and everybody literally started to think um, 7 p.m. was midnight. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a dark and quiet time of year, a time we feel like hibernating, um, and sometimes that leads to difficulties with mood and emotions, so we'll talk about that. But first... Dr. Dan's Holiday Gift-Giving Guide. If you've been a long-time listener to the podcast, you know where this is going. Experience over material. This is research-based and logotherapy-based, right? Finding gifts that incorporate spending time together or experiencing different things in life. Art, plays, music, magic, museums, a gift of spending time together experiencing something is far healthier than a gift of material. And I think we all know that in some way, right? We've seen kids receive gifts and they wind up in the trash pile in, in a few weeks or months, or certainly they change with age. I like to tell the story. I know somewhere out in the barn, I know exactly where it is actually, because I was working out there the other day, there sits a Barbie dream castle completely discolored beyond repair i don't think this can be cleaned up um, but people here in my house say no no we're going to clean that either to sell or for future generations so there it sits a christmas gift some many years ago probably a decade i don't know it's been a while experience over material to go out and do something with the ones you love to experience something whether it's a walk out in nature, or a trip to an art museum. I like finding plays in our local area and, and gifting the family tickets for later in the year. Um, experience 
A, we know that's more meaningful according to logo therapy. We discover meaning through experience, through creativity, and through our attitudes. Um, but also, I, I believe there's a whole path of goodness in experience, right? Especially as a gift. Because first, when you give that gift and somebody opens it up and they say, they see that they're going to do something, there's some excitement there. Hopefully some joy if you picked a good experience. But then there's also the anticipation, the looking forward to, the preparation, the opportunity to talk about what the experience might be like. And then, of course, we attend, we participate in the experience. Hopefully it's a joyful and enjoyable one. And then there's the memories that that creates, the opportunity afterwards to reminisce. Um, this will be a true test of whether or not my daughter listens to the podcast her Christmas gift, a few of her Christmas gifts this year. You know, I think I told you we we spent some time going to concerts earlier this year, back in the fall. And so, you know, I thought it'd be really cool to get some of those concert posters for her. That was an experience, a gift way back earlier in this year, but it keeps going on. So it's really healthy, right? It's research will even tell us it's healthy, but the idea of sharing experiences over material gifts. Now we all need some material every once in a while, a nice sweatshirt or something like that. But, you know, think about it and aim for something more experiential with the ones closest to you. And quite honestly, you only got two and a half weeks to get those gifts taken care of, depending on when you celebrate Christmas with who we all know there are different uh, groups of people we celebrate at different times. But in those two and a half weeks, my opinion, it'll be far easier to find a, a show or a concert or a play or a museum and buy those tickets and print them online. Uh, you're, you're arriving at the time where Amazon might not be able to get that gift to you if you buy it in time. Um, but speaking of that idea, speaking of we spend different days with different people at different times, right? Some of us celebrate Christmas on Christmas Day or whatever the holiday you might celebrate is, but it's also there's there's a two or three week period where we celebrate at different times with different people based on convenience and who can be there. So there's a lot of different, different people, different family that we really work hard to spend time with. And sometimes that means people we only see once a year that might not always be our favorite or might, maybe it's not even that that's a little too negative. Sometimes it's just people we're not used to being around and dealing with. And so coping can be a difficult experience. So a few things I thought about that as we're getting ready for time together with different family members. Um, I wrote down just a couple words, embrace, accept, and enjoy. This is truly meant to be the most joyful time of year as the song said. Did I get that right? Most wondrous time of the year? Hey, it's supposed to be a really cool time of year. Um, we slow down, we celebrate, we enjoy. And sometimes the people we're with aren't always the most enjoyable, but we can find ways to have fun, embrace those differences, accept those differences, and try to find a way to enjoy them. Uh, one of the phrases we've been using in psychedelic assisted therapy for a while now is, is this abbreviation, SATA, S-A-T-A. SATA is a reminder to surrender, to give in to the experience, that we can't always control it, and when that comes to psychedelics, but also when it comes to family members and people we spend time with. Allow it to happen. Go with the flow. This is the opposite of being stressed out about expectations and controlling. Trust that you're going to enjoy it. The opposite of trusting is, is having those negative uh, expectations. Whether you're driving cross country or just down the road, it can really set us in a negative state of mind to, to be in that attitude of, oh, this is going to be terrible. I don't want to see crazy Uncle Ron or whoever it might be. So trust that you'll find a way to have a good time. And just accept it. Accept the craziness of a family. Accept the differences that you might have. And this is a good opportunity to try to find joy in the season. Enjoy with the people you get to spend time with. W with that, I also recommend just taking time. You know, this time of year can be stressful. So take time for yourself. Take comfort, right? But not too much, right? We talk about, you know, if there's some holiday punch, surely imbibe, enjoy, but don't overdo it. You know, don't, don't get to the point where you do something embarrassing or, or make a fool out of yourself in some way. So take time, take comfort. This is that natural time of year as we talk about the seasonal affect 
and seasonal affect is sort of the seasonal in fact uh, seasonal affect impact of colder days, darker days, shorter days, less sunlight. It's okay to take some comfort. We have that. Again, I, I brought the cinnamon roll story up for a reason. I mean, you can tell it's getting to be winter when you know I eat a monstrous sugar biscuit full of cream cheese frosting goodness, right? I feel like a giant teddy bear right now, all warm and snug in that cinnamon roll and coffee. But uh, I'll make sure I go exercise it off later. This is the time. It's often a season where our body craves craves that kind of comfort food, right? It's called comfort food for a reason. And it's okay to enjoy a little bit. We have family gatherings where that's, you know, certainly uh, some goodness and some different foods. Enjoy, imbibe, just don't overdo it. Take comfort, but not too much. Take time, but not too much. So a lot of this has been leading to the idea of seasonal affect disorder, right? So we've talked about holiday gift giving, spending time with family, taking time for oneself, it seems if we look across uh, culture and history, you know, we have these holidays, regardless of culture, regardless of religion, many populations celebrate this as a joyous time of year for, for important reason, because across time and cultures, many times we've, we've felt this, we felt this lowness at this time of year that it's colder, we're farther from the sun, it's the, the days are shorter. Our bodies are impacted by that. And we've come up with a fancy name called seasonal affect disorder where we feel down, right? Our body naturally wants to hibernate. And that, you know, sometimes, I think sometimes we overdiagnose that as depression. Um, there's a couple ways to deal with that. It may not be depression. Maybe you're just, you know, that great big cinnamon roll teddy bear and you just want to hibernate. And that's okay. If it is depression, talk to a professional. Come on into the office or set up a Zoom call with me and we'll talk about it. Um, there are ways to fight seasonal affect disorder. And, uh, you know, I, I talk about this every year and I talk about this in my office. The ways to fight it, we know that sunlight uh, helps with vitamin D production in the body and uh, absorption. And when we don't have that sunlight, we feel low and vitamin D affects mood. So take some vitamin D. Quite honestly, we should all be on some kind of multivitamin anyway. Get on there, you know, go to your local pharmacy and find a, a multivitamin that works for you or get online. I know I've tried a couple of them. Um, there's all kinds, of, maybe a quick a tangent, a segue even. I know at this time in life for me, but also this time of year, supplements and trying different things, a little personal experimentation. I've been drinking mushroom coffee and trying different things there to see how that helps brain power and overall mood and got on a different multivitamin to see how that impacts things and tried some different, you know, I was reading the how not to die cookbook and they recommend certain anti-inflammatories. Uh, I started taking ashwagandha, um, which is different from ayahuasca. We'll talk about that some other time. Ashwagandha is just a, a good health supplement, right? You can get on Amazon or any, uh, you know, pharmacy, but experiment. There are so many supplements out there. Uh, I was into green drinks earlier this year and trying different ones of those to see how they impacted mood. You know, there's a lot of things we can do to supplement our diet uh, to ha that will have positive effects. And I often feel like this is the time of year to give them a try. If we know there's no harm in them, and they may or may not be overly positive, take some supplements. See what they do. Vitamin D is a helpful supplement at this time of year. Usually they come in 5,000 uh, unit. I don't think it's milligrams, but they're measured in units. 5,000 unit tablets. I often recommend you can take up to 10,000 a day, two tablets um, with little negative effect. I've known people to be up as high as 50,000 units a day because they were so deficient in vitamin D. Don't do that on your own. Check with your physician because too much vitamin D can build up toxicity Go have your blood work done, see if you're deficient, and have your doctor prescribe some vitamin D for you. Um, the other way to fight seasonal affect disorder, um, I, I, I've been joking about this in my office, you can get um, happy lights. Uh, happy lights are basically uh, the you know grow lights or UV lights or the, the kind of lights that you would put in a lizard tank to keep your lizard warm. Um, yeah, you just, you know, one of the therapists in my office just has one right 
you know, next to his desk and he's catching the happy rays all day long. I joke that I'm just going to get a giant six foot tall happy light and put it in my office um, because come January 3rd or 4th, that's what most people are struggling with. We, we hit the highs of the holidays and then we go into the beginning of the year and we start to work on uh, goals and resolutions and, you know, it catches up with us. That's why I'm sponsoring a, a ketamine retreat, uh, especially for therapists and clinicians and healers later in January, knowing um, I know I feel it. I know we all tend to feel it helping people, but also taking on our own issues with the change in seasons. Um, so if you're a clinician and interested in that, contact me directly. We have only four seats left for that ketamine retreat, and then we'll do one for uh, other individuals outside of therapists later on in the year. So fighting seasonal affect disorder, vitamin D, happy lights. Uh, if, if you're a big spender, um, get away. Uh, several years ago, I mean, I, I feel like it hit me pretty hard. And I, uh, uh, the following year, I'm like, that's it. I'm going to take a long weekend and, and go visit some friends in, uh, in Florida. I think I did that. How'd that go? I think I'm, you know, I did that. I did Florida in February and maybe uh, Texas for a long weekend in January. I tell you what, that Texas weekend, Thank goodness I was visiting good people because the weather was terrible. Uh, cold, actually, one two days it was cold and terrible and gray and windy. I'm like, why the heck did I come down here? And then one of the last days we got out on a golf course and it was absolutely gorgeous, um, almost too dang hot. Um, but yeah, take some vitamin D, get a happy light uh, if you can or want to. You know, take a long weekend and, and just get away, get to the sun, get to places like Arizona or, or Florida, or this is going to sound crazy, uh, even Colorado. Colorado prides itself on having 300 days of sunshine. Um, even though it may be cold and snowy, uh, the snow melts and the sun can definitely be uplifting. So those are a few ways to fight seasonal affect disorder. Now, here's the converse that I was just introduced to by one of my professors this year. Um, what if rather than trying to fight the impact on our body of the change in seasons, what if we simply embraced it? What if we found a way to enjoy that need for hibernation, that slowdown, right? And I, I took that to heart looking at, I think I've shared before, my calendar gets busy in the spring and summer and even into the fall where Weekends are often running to, to visit or to see people or, or classes or school or, you know, having to travel for that. And, you know, this time of year, we just don't travel as much. Although I say that, and I just drove out to Washington, D.C. for Thanksgiving. Um, I am looking forward to a slowdown, to taking it easy for these next few weekends, to not travel around. And not to force things maybe that don't need to happen. Maybe I'll do a little bit of work on future plans for uh, the Meaning Project podcast. But really, I'm going to try to find ways to embrace the weekend and simply relax, simply be rather than do. And I thought that was a beautiful idea to embrace the slowdown of this time of year and to allow it to happen, to hibernate, to get a nice warm blanket or a weighted blanket and sit by a fireplace or just simply watching TV enjoying a nice cup of tea or coffee and allowing our body that opportunity to rest. So that is my, my new theory in the office this year. We can try to fight seasonal affect disorder or we can embrace it and take time and really just let it be. And after we let it be, as we go into this new year, Right, so this is the, we'll call this the ho the holiday, the winter toolbox, the meaningful winter tour box, toolbox, because last point I want to make. So if Christmas is two and a half weeks away, next year is three and a half weeks away. Can you believe it? It'll be 2025, and most of us look to the next year, and this is a, a good time to reflect on the past year and think about what am I going to do with this next year, with this next set of four seasons? What do I want to do? There, what goals, what resolutions, what smart goals, right? Subjective, measurable. I don't remember smart goals anymore. Personally, I don't use them that much. I think all goals need to be smart and they need to follow some criteria and be realistic, possibly measurable, and you need to be able to accomplish them. That's what the A is. But, and I can't remember how I was introduced to this idea. Um, 
in in the recent past few years, simply setting some intentions. Ooh, that's a psychedelic system therapy term. But just coming up with words for your intentions for the year. These are goals. These are smart goals. But it's just a different way. And for me, um, I keep those words in front of me throughout the year. There's a sticky note here with them. Uh, I actually took some time, got a little creative, uh, which I'm not good at on on the uh, computer. Used Canva and created a fun little background to keep on my laptop. So when I open up, I remember these goals that I set. So for me, coming into 2025, these are kind of the big words that each one has. Well, it has a lot of little goals under it. And uh, these are actually in, in as I look at them on my screen, uh, kind of ranked in, in, in importance. So first, community. Um, that group ketamine experience changed things for me. I have always thought about and dreamt about and even worked in different kind of groups and communities. Um, I run a men's substance abuse group every Thursday. Um, I participate in a variety of, of supervisory groups, therapist groups, things like that. But that ketamine retreat, that practicum reminded me, first, how we're all starving for community. Most of us in some way are starving for community. We, we need it more and more. And I saw that in the therapist that I sat with. And I see that in my clients, very the people I get to help very often. And I'm just curious, maybe you're feeling that way as well. So um, I've talked about it for a long time. I worked with my good friend, Dr. Rabbi B in the Victor Frankel Meaning Academy. My goodness, I think we just wrapped that up this year um, to develop a community. And we're, we're working on a, we're participating together in another um, kind of men's support community. Uh, but I'm finally going to put together, I did this, well, now that I think about it, I kind of did a variation of this maybe five or six years ago for my my diplomate in logotherapy uh, project where I took a lot of information in logotherapy and, and put it together in kind of a class and community. And it, it worked out pretty well for a while. Um, I, I'm more serious about it now. So there will be a meaning project community that I start next year, an opportunity for us to gather, much like, much like the Victor Frankl Meaning Academy, but just different because this will be more focused – on my areas of expertise and what you want to get out of it. We'll talk about logotherapy. There will be a course in logotherapy. There will be uh, courses in psychedelic assisted therapy. I'm going to throw up all my information about the MBTI and see if, you know, how you might find that helpful as well as the other work I do on a regular basis, couples therapy, um, just the different things that, that I've learned in 25 years, but especially in the past five or 10 years of being a logo therapist. So that's, that's the number one goal for me next year is creating a community around meaning, purpose, and resilience. And I think we'll just call it the meaning project community. Um, the second goal that you can help me with is Cardion. Earlier this year, um, through a fun process of interviews and kind of a vetting process, I agreed to sign on to be the chief clinical officer of the Cardion app. And uh, being the chief clinical officer, that means I am all, I'm really responsible for a lot of the, the therapeutic content creation and managing a, another group of clinicians as we create content and build this app aimed at elevating mental health and wellness. Uh, we just released the beta of Cardion a couple weeks ago, I think just before Thanksgiving. And we're out there asking people to get on, to download, and to share feedback. Go play around with the app and contact me directly. Let me know what you think about it. Is it helpful for mental health and wellness? Um, how do we make it more helpful? Um, I signed on with Cody and the team at Cardion back in, I don't know, March or April. And we've been working pretty hard to get this app out there. It's out um, version 1.77, I, th I don't know how we do these numbers in, in app development, but, uh, and I think 1.78 is being released now. We're making a lot of updates. I guess that's what I need to say. And we have visions for what version 2.0 will look like and how we're going to continue to increase uh, functionality. I think that's one of the cool things about working in software development and app development. Um, I've always talked about the opportunity to grow and change and become as logotherapy talks about it. Man, 
that is what app development is all about. It, it's been really cool seeing how this works and, and being kind of a leader in the content creation and looking at um, apps are all about constant improvement and constant uh, change and evolution. So go take a look at the Cardion app. That's Cardion, C-A-R-D-E-O-N. I know there's a card I-O-N out there. Cardion, the, the purple logo, um, the app aims at elevating mental health and wellness. You get a set of cards every day, challenge cards, evaluation cards, general knowledge cards that should help you improve in your mental health and wellness. So Cardion, C-A-D-C-A-R-D-E-O-N. Have a look. Let me know what you think. And this one should come as no surprise. Community, Cardion, and Ketamine. Um, more specifically, uh, psychedelic-assisted therapy, or more generally psychedelic assisted therapy, but I think specifically um, ketamine because uh, that's what I've had a lot of experience in recently, but also, well, <laughs> it's, it's more legal. I don't see my state legalizing psilocybin anytime soon, although I am contemplating getting my license in Colorado uh, because they do offer a licensing opportunity. Um, I will be traveling to... Oregon later this year for a practicum in psilocybin. I'm sure I will talk about that as well. Uh, but when it comes to ketamine, um, A, right now um, I can do ketamine-assisted therapy uh, with my partner in a nearby town, um, a medical provider who, you know, she does the injections or the IVs and uh, we do ketamine-assisted therapy. Now, there are a lot of ketamine clinics out there that don't do ketamine assisted therapy. And I think I've talked about that before. Um, you go in, you receive your ketamine, either IV injection or uh, the um, nasal version of it for maintenance and updates. And they put you in a room with a TV remote and it does its work. And it, it's worked well for many people. Um, however, being a therapist and a logo therapist, I believe in the power um, of healing conversation during this process and certainly after. We talk a lot about preparation and integration in the psychedelic assisted therapy world. And that integration process um, spans quite a while, um, sometimes a lifetime, right? But it can be, it should be right after the session, a few days later, and then ongoing, integrating what happens during this time. How it changes us, how we can continue to change is a very important uh, factor in good ketamine-assisted therapy. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to offer. I believe in it. I will have, I have two meetings next week um, with two different providers to find out how to be able to offer um, ketamine in my office, wherever that might be. Um, without needles, there are ketamine lozenges that uh, we can get prescribed and you can come to my office and have an experience and we can process it. Now, one of my goals with that is certainly to make it affordable, but my goodness, it's that's not easy. Um, you know, because very often a ketamine assisted therapy session is anywhere from two to three hours. So it'll be more on that. I'm going to figure it out. Um, I'm going to continue to partner with Julie at Ketamine is Hope to offer uh, IVs and, and intramuscular injections. She and I will be hosting retreats, but then there's also the opportunity to do it differently. And so more on that to come. So community, a meaning project community, Cardion. I want to help more people in bigger ways. You've heard me say that before, and I think Cardion definitely has the ability to do that, as does the meaning project community um, and ketamine. Wow, now that I look at it, all of these are ways to help more people in bigger and better ways. So I hope you will continue to join with me and to listen where that goes and maybe even hop on the Meaning Project community. Um, those are, huh, I just realized those are all work goals. I do have a personal goal. Now, I just came up with this last week. It hit me. Um, so uh, I'm going to call it impulsive, but I'm going to put it out there. And we'll see uh, if I hold myself or if others hold me accountable to it. Um, picked up this beautiful new bike two years ago and really didn't put it to much use last year. And I need to. I want to. And um, 
some of you know that MS, multiple sclerosis, has been a part of my life for uh, over two decades now. And early on uh, through college and graduate school, I would frequently do an MS bike tour. Um, they, MS has an amazing uh, charity bike tour system. And uh, we would go up to Chicago and ride through the city and raise money for MS uh, research. And it's been a while since I've done that. So uh, I'm going to do one next year. Um, there's one nearby in beautiful Holland, Michigan, or even uh, Frankenmuth, Michigan is a, uh, a German town up there. But um, yeah, I'm going to do a, an MS ride. Um, I feel like easily I can conquer 50 miles. But so here's the thing with MS bike rides, you know, not like a, unlike a 5k where you pay your registration fee and you go run and you get done and the money goes to charity. Uh, the MS bike tour expects you to raise money. So, uh, yeah, if you go hop on the Dr. Dan Facebook page next year, I'll probably have an, an ask for a couple bucks, five bucks, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 50, whatever you want to, whatever you want to donate for MS research. And here's how I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to plan on 50 miles, but if we raise enough money, if I, I think the entry is $250 um, to raise, but if we raise, if we, anything between 250 and $750, I'll do my 50 miles. But if we raise more than that, I'll push myself for 75 miles. And if we break a thousand dollars, I'll train for a hundred miles. That's right. I think I'm going to do 100 miles this year I will, in, in one sitting. Well, I, I'll get off a couple times. But, yeah, that's always been a goal, and I think maybe I'll push myself to that. Again, somewhat impulsive. I'm putting it out there in the world. Hopefully I hold myself accountable. Uh, it is cold and snowy where I live right now, so I should probably get online and look for a bike trainer because you can't wait just for good weather to be ready for 100 miles. So those are my goals for 2025. What are yours? Maybe they're just to get through these next few weeks of the holidays. If, if that's the case, know that you're in my thoughts and my clinical work uh, is here for you. I hope you enjoy these next last few weeks of 2024 and are looking forward to 2025. My goodness, I can't even believe we're talking about that already. Uh, I was just saying last month, I can't believe it's already Christmas, but here we are. Time flies. You have to embrace it. You have to enjoy it. You have to accept, surrender, allow, trust, all of these things. Get out there and discover some meaning. Have fun with it. And if you're not, there are people like me out here to help. We can always meet on Zoom or you can come to my office or I can refer you to a trusted partner darn near any part of the country, maybe even the world. So get in touch. Um, as always, thank you. Hey, I appreciate you listening. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy day and holiday season to get just a little bit of mental health and meaning in your day. Take care.